So the, so the last thing we're going to see in this chapter is the relationship between investment and savings. Okay, so let's look at private savings first. Private savings means savings of the people, so for you and me and so on. So S, which is equal to how much? How much do we save? We have an income. From this income, we pay tax, which gives us a disposable income. Out of this disposable income, we consume, and whatever is left is our savings. Okay, now let's look at public savings. Whenever we say public, we effectively mean the government. So the government savings, which is T minus G, where T is tax and G is, as we've seen, government spending. So whenever T minus G is more than zero, so government's revenue is more than government's expenditure, there is a budget surplus. And whenever T minus G is less than zero, which means government's revenue is less than its expenditure, we have a budget deficit. Okay. Now, what we know, what we have seen already, is that Y is equal to C plus I plus G. Let's subtract T from both sides, so Y minus T equals to C plus I plus G minus T. I'm going to take C to the other side, so I get Y minus T minus C equals to I plus G minus T. Now, look at this, Y minus T minus C, which is equal to this. So what I can write is that S is equal to I plus G minus T. Or if I simplify this a little bit more, what I can write is that I is equal to S plus T minus G. Now, what does that tell us? I is investment, S is private savings, T minus G is public savings. So effectively, uh, I'm just going to write this down because this is an important relationship. Investment, total investment in an economy is equal to private savings plus public savings. So effectively what this shows us is that equilibrium in the goods market, notice this chapter is just about the goods market. So equilibrium in the goods market require investment be equal to savings. Now this is often known as the IS relationship. And this is important. We're going to deal with this in a later course, uh, in a later chapter, which is going to be very important. So this is the end for this chapter. We do not have anything more to cover. Uh, in the next video, I will be solving some problems, uh, which hopefully clarifies some of the confusions that I'm sure all of you have. Mm. There is going to be a very small assignment that will be discussed in the next video as well. But I just want to say this at, at this point is that this has been a difficult chapter, obviously. Uh, and preferably if things worked out the way they should, 
we would start with all the easy chapters and then move on to more difficult chapters, but that's not always the case. And we see that here, where chapter three is a bit complex uh, because you guys are being introduced to a lot of new ideas that you may not have heard of before. I mean, and even when I was doing intermediate macro a few years ago, I struggled with this chapter. So what I'm just telling you guys is don't worry too much if you're struggling with this chapter. First of all, obviously, I'm here to help. So whatever help you need, you can come to me. But what's more important is that this is not what the rest of the semester is going to be like. We have two or three difficult chapters, but we also have quite a few much easier chapters. So don't think that just because this first chapter is difficult, everything else will be much more difficult. That's actually not the case. And this is one of the more difficult chapters that we will be, do, will be doing in this course. All right, so just solve the problems, do the assignment, and if there are any more confusions, and I expect there will be, so whatever confusions you have, do come to me with it and I'll help you as much as I can.